Hey everyone, it's Jim from Melatone Amps, and in today's episode, we're going to learn how to solder. Now, there's only three basic things that we need to cover to get you up and running. Well, not running, but <laughs> soldering. You won't be soldering like a pro right away because it takes a little bit of time and practice, but you will be doing some good solder work after you um, follow this video. Now, the video is going to be based on a little kit of parts we put together that's available in the store, but if you have some scrap bits lying around, that's just fine. So we're actually going to, to use all of the things that I show you in the video, uh, show you how to use them and what to watch for. And there's really only three things we need to cover. First, we need to cover safety. Second, we need to cover tools and materials. And third, we need to cover methodology. And methodology is basically um, time and temperature. And I'll show you all of that through um, uh, real examples live. <laughs> okay, let's get going. Okay, safety is absolutely critical um, in any of your endeavors. You want to you want to really look after, uh, in particular, the 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 burn and fire hazard of your soldering iron. So. I highly, highly recommend you get a soldering station that has an auto off. And what that does is when the soldering iron hasn't been moving around for a little while, the sensor will just simply turn the iron off. First, it'll put it into sleep mode and some, some, and take the heat off the tip and some will just simply turn off. Auto off is a critical thing I would have, um, on, on my bench. The other thing you want is a good quality temperature controlled soldering iron. That is absolutely critical for good work. And um, there's lots of them out there. You don't need to spend a fortune on a big workstation. Just find a well-reviewed uh, um, quality soldering station and you'll be good. And a soldering station that takes a selection of tips is also very important. So there's a couple of different kinds. So Charles and I actually uh, prefer different stations on our lab benches. So Charles is actually takes uh, a cartridge. I think it was uh, invented in Japan. And the, the heating element and the tip are all in a cartridge. So the advantage of this type is that if the heating element dies, you just replace this, essentially the cartridge. And the rest of the um, soldering station is still good. Um, I prefer a much more brutal approach, which uses a big chunk of metal as a solid tip, basically. with It's got an opening. I'll show it to you quickly. So the um, the tips are interchangeable and they sit on top of the element. This type, you've got to be careful, particularly when the tips are new, they get carboned up inside here and then you don't get good heat transfer. So take your, your new tip after you've been running it for a little while and go out to a solid chunk of metal in your shop. A vise, a metal vise is perfect, but you know, even a bit of uh, concrete on the sidewalk is fine and just tap it out like that and you'll you'll especially when it's fairly new you'll have a fair amount of carbon in there so keep this all clean here as well so and we'll talk a, a little bit more about the soldering station when we get um, into the tool section right now we're really talking about safety um, when you're done soldering, even if you're just taking a short coffee break and gonna grab a bun or something, um, you, you should wash your hands to get rid of any residue that's on your hands. You could wear nitrile gloves. Um, that's a possibility. I think if I had um, uh, young children in the house or a baby, I probably would glove up. If it's just you or you and your partner, um, just head over to the kitchen sink Put a little bit of dish soap on your hands and give them a good scrub and uh, you'll be good. The other thing that you've got to watch out for is ventilation. It's absolutely critical that you work near a window, that you open your window at least partially, even in the winter, so you have good fresh air and ventilation. 
And on my bench, if I'm doing a lot of work, I have a little USB fan that I just mount off to the side, not too close to the work because you don't want to cool off your soldering iron and your work. Um, but it just basically keeps the air flowing across the surface of the bench and draws those fumes away. So if the fan is blowing towards the window, that's absolutely perfect. Um, and work on a, a non-flammable surface. Make sure you create some good space around yourself so that you can work safely and just show some common sense. Um, and never forget that the irons get very hot. They are a significant burn and fire hazard. And it's really easy, I find, when you're focused on your work to actually put your soldering iron in the wrong spot. So make sure that you have a fireproof holder and that you just make sure to look every time you put it into the holder that it's in properly. I, I've, so many times I've, I've dumped it into the holder in the wrong position and the auto off of the station has saved me. So, yeah, so a good station with auto off can really save your bacon. And if you stopped working for even a short while for a coffee break, turn the soldering station off. That's the safest thing to do. Okay, let's take a look at, at tools and materials. Okay, so we were just talking about uh, the soldering station um, and we've covered quite a bit of what to look for. Just make sure that you get a soldering station with auto off and with a with the temperature control and a replaceable tip type. Now, talking about tips, um, this is the tip that Charles likes to use for general work. It's a fairly small um, chisel tip. I like to use a bigger one. So mine is uh, a full eighth of an inch or just a hair over three millimeters. And it's also a chisel tip. Now, this you could call this a general tip because I can do a lot of work on heavy work on the flat where I get lots of contact, or I can work on the on the tip of the chisel for smaller stuff. Now, this is a general tip for um, for regular components like we're gonna we're gonna be practicing with in a minute. Um, but having a selection of tips really will make your day, especially when you're working with either very large or very small components. You can't go after um, a very small component like an IC, integrated circuit, with a big tip like this. You'll just destroy everything you touch. <laughs> and conversely, if you have a huge job to do, uh, you will need a bigger and heavier tip. And most people will have just a general soldering iron, but if you have a really heavy duty job to do, you need a bigger soldering iron, higher wattage. So uh, solder is absolutely critical that you get the good stuff. It makes all the difference in the world. This is what we use on our benches. Some people might, um, when they buy their soldering station for the first time, get a kit of parts. And in that kit will be a no lead solder. Those are really tough to learn to solder for beginners. I highly recommend you go with a standard lead tin mixture and follow the safety recommendations on ventilation that I mentioned earlier. <laughs> um, you're gonna need some kind of a flux. There, yes, this is, this is rosin cord electrical solder, so it's got a flux in the middle of the core. And in fact, uh, Charles likes to use something that's triple or quad core. And so there's a lot of little um, matrixes of flux inside the solder but you're almost certainly gonna to wanna to work with an extra little bit of flux. This is a no clean by Keg. This is very good stuff. All flux is not made equal. So you have to make sure that you're using electrical solder flux and it's just sticky gooey stuff. You're gonna see how to use it safely in just a minute. Um, and at some point, you're going to have to do some reworking. Maybe you're doing some repair or you're reworking uh, something you've actually um, already just finished. So an inexpensive little solder pump, and I'll show you how to use these. They're, this one's actually stuck. 
Let's see if it'll go. There it goes. It's just a vacuum, little vacuum pump and, um, and some solder wick. And I'll show you how to use all of this when we get to it. And other bits and bobs really help out. You know, a bamboo skewer is amazing on the bench and a little toothpick kind of skewer. <laughs> They're all really handy. And you're going to need something to clean off your tip. This is, uh, we both make up our own little tip cleaning um, uh, tins. This is just a, a um, a tuna tin that I've cleaned out of course and I've put a little piece of tape around the rim so it's not sharp or a hazard and I've used an old kitchen stainless steel scrubber. Uh, old pot scrubbers are the best, brand new ones are not so you, if you don't have one used lying around you're going to have to use one up somehow cleaning a pot or something. Charles uses a brass one, uh, it works just as well, his is smaller. Um, but it still works just fine. I'm going to show you how to do all of that. Okay, and we'll probably come across uh, a few things that I haven't thought of right now. But let's get to um, the let's get to actually practicing together and show you exactly how everything works. Okay, let's get going. Okay, so one of the things that is really important really handy is to have um, little mini vices as well as a good work area. I actually work on an elevated desk that has not a fireproof surface but a fairly fire resistant surface. Um, if you could come up with a metal surface that would be far superior. Um, so yeah little vices are really handy. Um, so let's go ahead and grab our bag of parts and I promise you we'll be working in just a minute. Now the first thing you're going to find with either a used soldering iron or a brand new one is that the tip is not clean. So it should always be put away tinned and ready to work. So this is how you, you clean the gunk off. So get it in there, get it clean. Now you can see we get it really focused here. You see how the tip is tinned? That's not how they come, of course. Now, what I've done is I've just taken a little roll of solder and um, rolled it up into uh, something that's handy to use. I've been doing this more and more often. If I have a lot of soldering to do, I actually just I leave the big reel on um, a spool holder on my bench. But this is how you solder. So. How you, how you tin. So I'm going to call out temperatures first in Celsius and then in Fahrenheit. So to tin your soldering tip, every iron is going to be a little different and every tip will be a little different, but you could start somewhere around 360 C, which is going to be somewhere around 680 Fahrenheit. So just go ahead and flow out some solder on your tip and just work it around like this and if you've got a little blob of solder on there just clean it some more until you have a nice clean looking tip. Now if you're if you got a brand new soldering iron um, then this will be pretty easy. If you uh, have inherited a soldering iron and it's um, it's got a really mucked up tip really do a good job cleaning that tip before you even turn the iron off. So some very fine black sandpaper and some of this uh, steel wool will help and then go ahead and get it tinned. So your soldering tip has to be tinned to do a good job. Okay so we're going to be practicing uh, with the PCB that's in your uh, sample pack of parts. Uh, the PCB you get might be different than this. This is just a surplus board that we had. So prepping the board is really important. Even a brand new board will have some kind of a contaminant on the surface that will impede a good solder connection. So I've included in your kit um, a little 3M blue scrubber. These are fabulous. Go over to the sink, put a little dish soap on this. You don't want a dish soap that's got you know additives in it. You want just a nice clean dish soap. 
that won't leave any residue and um, scrub this board each direction. So keep turning it around. So four rotations and you're done. Flip it over, do the same thing on the other side. These are double-sided boards. And, um, and then make sure to dry your board thoroughly before you start soldering or you're going to get a lot of sp spluttering, which is dangerous. Um, so yeah, so prep your board. And, and then um, let's, let's get a component on this board and stop with all this yapping. <laughs>